Hey, what up, everybody? Uh, Stephen Breach coming to you. Good night, good night tonight. Um, WWE Monday Night Raw was a damn good show. I was pumped. Uh, I was really, really busy at work today. It was a, it was a good hard day coming off the holiday, uh, putting stuff back together and uh, running specials and everything like that. Um, there was a good time. I didn't get to look at my phone at all, and I listened to the Braves game throughout the day. So uh, when I got to the point of almost getting off from work, I said, you know, I haven't looked at my phone, I don't know anything about Monday Night Raw from tonight, so let's head on home uh, and check it out without any spoilers, stayed off of Twitter as I watched the show. Um, uh, it, it's not all that often uh, with me working during Raw all the time that I get to actually come home and watch the spoiler-free Monday Night Raw where um, I don't know anything that's going to happen, so I was really excited to, for uh, tonight, and I'm glad that I did because it paid off for me because I thought that it was a good show. Looking back on it, uh, that I had to look up a review that was typed up so I could make this video. Uh, maybe looking back on it won't be as fun as, as watching the show, but uh, we'll uh, go back over it. Uh, the show's show opened with what I knew it was probably going to open with because I do follow Paul Heyman on Twitter and the WB was tweeting about it and everybody was talking about it throughout the day on Twitter was um, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, you know, showing up and ra raising ha havoc over the uh, the WB um, headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut. Um, I knew this was going to be a big angle. I didn't know that it was going to pay off as good as it did on TV. Um, it was freaking gold. Uh, my only uh, problem with the way, what they did was they covered it like they wanted to build up ratings. I think a lot of people that followed it on Twitter were thinking like me that it would be the lead into the show that they would show all the footage that they were doing. They didn't show the footage until I believe two hours into the show. That means what they did, if you were if you were following on Twitter when they were breaking it live, it was seven hours later. And uh, one of my Twitter followers <laughs> explained it best when saying that uh, when I was saying that like. It's kind of stupid when you really think about it, that it was seven hours later and they're trying to play it off like it was live, but yet it's a Twitter angle that they were you know, tweeting about it so far in advance. And now all of a sudden, finally, it's a big deal because Raw has gone on the air. And um, it's just dumb. And, you know, nobody called the cops, nobody happened. But um, everything about that whole thing on TV was, was great. It's going to be on every single DVD I can think of that would come out. If, if the Oh My God DVD was to come out tomorrow, it would be on there. If a top 100 moments of Monday Night Raw, it would make that countdown. It was a great, great thing. Probably one of the best things that they've done in a long time. Paul Heyman was shooting the thing. I'm not sure if that's the way they did it or if that's the way they wanted to make it look. That he was actually shooting it on his iPhone as they walked around. And then they just used that footage as, as the footage that they used for, uh, for Monday Night Raw. I'm not sure that they did it that way, but if they did, it's even better. But all the camera angles looked great. It was locked. It was nice to hear Brock Lesnar talk in like a easy tone as they walked up and down the halls. As they said, the, 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 "Do you have an appointment?" And he said, "Yes." I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's the first time I've ever heard Brock just speak in a normal tone at all. It was just awesome. We had a stare down between Brock Lesnar and The Rock. It was too bad that it was it was a, a poster on the wall on the wall for the Royal Rumble 2013, and The Rock wasn't able to do it in person uh, the night after WrestleMania because even though it was only a second, uh, Paul hyping it up made it seem like he was actually there, and they were building to something. We'll have to see what happens. Once they went into Triple H's office, it is the office of a thousand jokes. He had a sledgehammer on the wall. Uh, I thought, my, my first view, he had a picture of uh, him, The Undertaker, and Shawn Michaels from WrestleMania 28, the end of an era. Uh, I actually thought that that was the WrestleMania 20, uh, 28 Taker plaque when I first saw it on the wall. Um, it, they destroyed that place. I, I was honestly very surprised that Triple H had a desk from Ikea. It won't cost WWE that much to replace it. Um, they, they, they didn't hide anything. They didn't change any of the nameplates on the wall. It said, you know, Triple H's real name, Paul, on there. Um, they, they didn't trip, change it to say Triple H or just put three H's on there. Do that thing they always do when they go to the dressing rooms and it just has like a freaking sticker on there and it says the wrestler's name on there like that's their special dressing room. Like they, 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 they take the door and they move it to arena to arena everywhere they go across the country. But, uh, you know, Triple H just smashed it. Paul Heyman threw the um, business card in there just in case 
Uh, he didn't know who it was, even though that when uh, Paul Heyman was doing his interview, uh, Triple H came out. All nonchalantly, too. Like, he really just didn't care at all about what he had done. Explained to him that, uh, you know, once there's a match that he's going to have to pay. It honestly seemed like when Brock Lesnar was doing this, he was doing it to send a message. And Triple H really didn't seem like he got the message. This was a good angle. It was uh, pretty, pretty awesome. In the end, it's really just for a match that I don't really care to see at all, even though it's two of the biggest names, one of my favorite wrestlers. It's just, I don't know, I was trying to really think about it. Like, Extreme Rules is always, you know, the thing of, the you know, the pay-per-view of rematches. And, um, you know, why does it never really work? And it, it's, it, everybody has the mania blues, everybody knows it's not WrestleMania, and, you know, it just slips into this sort of thing of just, eh, it's Extreme Rules, I don't really care about it. It's just, um, Maybe because they don't do a pay-per-view in March, they build up the angles for WrestleMania so long that by the time, you know, they come around to this extreme paper pay-per-view, uh, you know, most of the angles have been going for three months now, and they just seem like they're going forever. And most of the time, if the pay-per-view goes three months, and when they have three consecutive pay-per-views, uh, that's about the time people start throwing in the towel as well. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just what it was. Other matches that uh, jumped out to me, uh, Randy Orton versus Damian Sandow was a great match. I'm not the biggest fan on Damian Sandow. I like the stuff that he does with his uh, the mic when he's talking. I've never been a real fan of his stuff that's in the ring, but you know, it honestly really did surprise me, especially for the fact that I don't like Randy Orton that night that much. If it wasn't for Del Rio versus Ziggler, it would have been match of the night. But the Del Rio versus Ziggler hyping up the main events was freaking awesome. The only thing that was better than that was Jack Swagger leaving everyone in the the ring laying. He pulled out a ladder and he beat the crap out of everyone. It was just devastation. Almost like when Mark Henry, you know, got eliminated from the Elimination Chamber, went back in and just laid everybody out. It was like that. When Swagger, you know, chose that it was his time to leave, uh, basically, um, he had killed everyone. Uh, a match that didn't make any sense was they were hyping up the Shield. The Shield had a match against the Usos and Kofi Kingston. If Kofi Kingston's going to get built up to beat Antonio Cesaro, I wish they would have something better for him than this. Because um, this makeshift tag team, of, you know, I know they just needed to have somebody out there, just isn't doing anybody any favors. Uh, Cesaro versus Zack Ryder. Uh, Cesaro got the squash win. Hopefully that they're redoing this, uh, this whole thing together. I think a lot of people really spoke highly of the Kofi versus Cesaro match from main event. Uh, it was a really, really good match. By the time I saw it, it didn't really matter. But um, I was going to make a review on it, but it was so late that it was just that. Eh. But it was it was a real, real fun show to watch. The match went three segments. I can't think of the last time a match went that long on WWE TV. There wasn't CM Punk versus John Cena on Monday Night Raw. But uh, I, you can tell that they're not mad at Cesaro. He's not in the doghouse. It was just time for him to lose a title, and I can't... I can't picture any reason in the world why um, he lost for so long when he was the champion, but I don't know. It doesn't all make sense. There was a six-person uh, six tag team match, AJ and the Bellas versus Cameron and um, Naomi and Caitlin, the Dancing Fat Guys chicks. This was just basically a hype up the reality show, pretty much. There's no other reason out there. I took a small break to go wash my hands uh, during this match. Um, it just... It didn't work for me. It just, meh. Um, from there, uh, Sheamus and Mark Henry. Mark Henry beat the shit out of everybody there. Uh, they announced that Van Dango and uh, Chris Jericho uh, were going to have a dance-off next week on Monday Night Raw. That was stupid. I must have missed it. I flipped over it too much. Oh, no, that's right. Jericho came out, and he was out there for Van Dango. They had that little promo when they were doing the dance thing, and they were judging the dancing. Uh, with the dancing fat guys, they were out there as well. When Jericho's music went off, for some reason I popped like crazy. Like he had been gone for like a year, and we were getting an actual return. I just don't know why I forgot Chris Jericho was in WWE, but uh, that, for some reason it was a, a real reaction, like a real pop. I was really, really into that. Uh, main event was the Ryback vs. Kane. Of course, uh, on SmackDown, we got the Ryback vs. Daniel Bryan. And uh, this match was just as good as that one. Good, good stuff. At the end of the match, though, um, Ryback had left Kane laying in the middle of the ring. 
the shield theme came on, they came down, I guess, to come after Kane. Ryback hit the bricks, and uh, Kane was laying in the middle of, in the middle of the ring. Daniel Bryant made the save. Uh, shortly after uh, John Cena made the save uh, to save Daniel Bryant, as the shield closed in even more. If you're watching the show, Kane just magically disappears. I don't know where the fuck he went. Honestly, he probably just rolled out of the ring. But as the shield made their way down... Uh, Daniel Bryan and John Cena stood in the middle of the ring like they were ready to fight. And if they were coming down to the ring to attack Kane, he's laying outside the ring all alone, unguarded. I mean, if they were going to, you know, uh, uh, you know, try to protect Kane, they should have at least stayed next to him or something like that. But anyways, Ryback surprisingly comes in to make the save as the Shields enters in the ring. Just as you think all is right and Ryback and John Cena might be on the same page... Ryback hits him with a chair and <laughs> lays him out. Ryback rules, and that is about it. You know, looking back at, back at it, the show was as good as I thought it was. I had a lot of fun watching this show. Um, I can't, I know I didn't watch the whole show. I had to have fast forwarded. I think I fast forwarded through the uh, Cesaro and Zack Ryder match a little bit because I just knew what was going to happen because Zack Ryder's going nowhere right now. And I think the uh, Sheamus and Mark Henry stuff bored me a little bit because a lot of it was just. Uh, Showing the past segments of the last few shows with the arm wrestling competition and the um, tug of war. Um, but everything else was, was good stuff. It was a fun show. We know what we're going to. Extreme Rules is coming up right around the corner. It's going to be a fun show. So uh, everybody out there, hope you watch. Hope you had fun. Talk to you in the next video. Peace out.